All right, I'm back on here. Um, we had some technical problems before, but uh, good, e good afternoon, everyone. It's about 2.08 Central Time here in the U.S., and I uh, hope that you're having a wonderful day. And I just wanted to get on and encourage you and pray together. And normally I do this on a Friday or Saturday, but Sharon and I, we have a busy weekend coming up. Uh, we'll be ministering in Wichita, Kansas at Berean Assembly. So if you're anywhere within, you know, the driving distance of Wichita, Kansas, we'd love for you to come uh, check us out. Sharon will be ministering on Friday and then uh, coming back and she'll be ministering here at Covenant Church on Sunday, and I'll be staying up there ministering Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but I wanted to come on here, and uh, if you're, uh, if you, uh, I'd love to hear for you wh where you're watching, where you're watching this from, whether on Facebook or YouTube. Um, press the thumbs up button, subscribe to the Corn Ministries YouTube channel. But again, I'd love to hear for your where you're watching from. Just type that in. If you have a prayer request, type that in. Uh, again, you don't have to go into great detail. Uh, but just you can type it in and others will see it and will pray as well because when I do these prayer videos as I say often I'm not doing it as an observation event where you're simply watching uh, I'm, I'm doing it in a way that we participate together in prayer now I'm going to encourage you and you observe that but the prayer we do it together and you know I, I used to teach in Bible college uh, for 22 years and one of the things that I used to, I was very blessed to do that, by the way. And, uh, but one of the things I used to tell the students, and I still my attitude today in pastoring to a church tradi in traditionally style uh, is that when I minister, uh, I'm not ministering so that people will simply vegetate on a pew somewhere, but I'm ministering so that people get the word and they participate in ministry in this say in this case participate in prayer and so but as you can see maybe see on the heading of this video uh, i want to talk about from going going from what is it to i have it from what is it to i have it you know the the children of israel they live 40 years in the wilderness off, and feeding off of manna. God gave them supernatural provision. It was called manna. and But you know what manna means? Manna literally means what is it. it that's what the children of Israel called it. They said, it's, this is manna. This is manna. What is it? It's a question. And they lived for 40 years, or they went through, and most of that generation that came out of Egypt died in the wilderness but they, they lived on a question, what is it? And what I have found over the years, I've seen it in myself and I've seen it in many others, is that so often we as believers, we can live with more questions than we have answers. Or we, again, we live that way. We're, we're feeling that way as if we have more questions than answers. And I want to clarify what I'm saying today because you know as we go through this Christian journey there are going to be questions that we have and it's an you know what there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing sinful about having questions in life and but the Bible tells us that in James chapter 1 he said if any of if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and without reproach. Without reproach means that God's not going to rebuke us for asking him about the questions that we have. And so, so this world, in this world, we're going to have questions. But here's the point I'm making, is that sometimes we can live as if we have more questions than we have answers. And get this, as a child of God, especially under the new covenant, and this really applied under the old covenant as well with Israel, but especially now through the provision that God has given to us in the person of Jesus, who he is and what he's accomplished for us, and, and the fact that we have his word, it's not, we don't have a portion of his word, we have the 66 books of the Bible. And, and get this, especially us under the new covenant, life is not, and this earth is not perfect. It, ha, it, it has pain in it. It has hurts in it. it ha, and it has questions in it. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. 
But under, under the new covenant, we as believers, we can live this life. And this is the way God has planned for us. What he has for us, his heart for us, is to live this life with more answers than questions. And, and specifically, I want to come from John chapter 6, which John chapter 6 was a pivotal moment in the ministry of Jesus. And I want to say this again. We're going to pray together uh, in, a, in just a moment. And when I do these prayer videos, again, I do it in a way of that we're participating together in prayer. So this is not a observation event. This is a participation event, but we're going to pray together in just a moment. But again, if you have a prayer request, uh, type it in there. And I see that uh, Michael from Brooklyn, we're going to pray for you for cancer, uh, son salvation, Nancy, Selena, all oh, good to see you there. Um, physical healing and strength. So again, if you have, I'd love to hear for you where you're watching uh, from, uh, type in your prayer request. Press the thumbs up. Uh, later, this will go on our Cornell Ministries YouTube channel. Subscribe to the Cornell Ministries YouTube channel if you haven't already. But John chapter 6, and I'm going to pick up with verse 47. And John chapter 6, again, is such a pivotal moment in the ministry of Jesus. Why? Is because in chapter 6, which was about the midpoint of his ministry, he went from masses, I mean, thousands of people following him in various locations, okay, where he would go and he would heal the sick, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that, but but masses of people following him to just a small number of people following him. And why is that? Why why did the masses leave following Jesus on a consistent basis and then just a few following him, mainly, mainly his disciples. And again, there were other disciples besides the 12. It was because Jesus did this teaching that I'm about to read right here. And I'm just reading the portion of it. In the beginning of John 6, verse 47, he, this is what he said. And you can, we can take this personally. Most surely I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and our and are dead. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, I am the bread of life. And he said, your, your fathers, your ancestors, they ate the what is it in the, in the wilderness and they're dead. They live with the question and they're dead. But he said, I'm the bread of life. And then he said this, in verse 50, this is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came, which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Of course, he was speaking about what he would do with the cross. He said, the bread that I give is my flesh. And, you, and if you want to have life, you have to eat of my flesh. And he would later on say, you have to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And they said, and it says, the Jews therefore quarreled among themselves. In other words, they argued among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? They were taking it all the wrong way. <laughs> they were taking the words of Jesus in a physical way as if Jesus was some kind of cannibal freak. And that's not, of course, what Jesus was saying. He was talking about figuratively, spiritually, by faith, we eat of him because he's the word, he's the bread, and we eat of his finished work at the cross. That is our spiritual sustenance. And I see those prayer requests there. We're going we're gonna to be praying for those there. Praise God. But here's the thing. The, you know, let me, let me, let me actually, I got ahead of myself. Let me, let me read this as well. This is what the Jews said. Therefore, many of his disciples, now these were disciples, not the 12, okay? But this was the multitude, the thousands of people that were following him. 
And earlier on in John chapter 6, this is how aggressive they were in following Jesus. Okay, They even crossed the Sea of Galilee to find Jesus because Jesus had fed the multitude in the beginning of John chapter 6. And then Jesus took off because he knew that they were following him for the wrong reasons. But John refers to them as disciples. They were followers of Jesus, but followers of Jesus for the wrong reason. But they said this. When they heard this, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Get this. And I say get this a lot, so have to excuse me. I have to, I have to consciously say, think about it. Don't say get this all the time, okay? But... Um, so get this, all right? Here is Jesus saying, your fathers, they lived with a question. But what I'm telling you, multitudes, is I am the answer. I am the fulfillment to the what is it. I'm the answer to what is it. I am the bread which, is, which has come down from heaven. I am, you're looking at him, I am the bread of life which the Father has sent from heaven that if you eat me, it is if you believe in me, you will never die. Your fathers ate the what is it in the wilderness and they're dead. But if you eat of me, you'll never die. You'll have everlasting life. And that doesn't mean that we won't die a physical death, but it means that we'll, that really we, <laughs> when we die a physical death, we'll be with the Lord, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. And one day we will have a resurrected body just like Jesus with no effects of the fall in a spirit, soul, and body. All the effects of the fall are gone. And again, I want to encourage you today that sometimes we as believers, that we can live as if there's more questions than, than or, the, or the questions are bigger than the answer. The answer is Jesus. The answer is what God has given to us in his word and the relationship that we have with him. Any questions that we have, we can go to him and, and ask him. But get this, the main answer to every question is Jesus, who he is, what he's done. And that multitude, they heard the words of Jesus. Jesus telling them, your fathers were living with a question. I'm the answer. And you know, what, you know what the multitude did? They followed up the answer with another question. They said, they, again, they argued among themselves and they said, who can understand this? Who, who can understand Jesus? He, he doesn't make sense. Again, who can understand this? They went from the answer right there in front of them and they through because of unbelief they went right back into living the question what is it we don't understand this and sometimes again we as believers we can we can and I'm not trying to be hard but I'm I'm preaching to myself we can do the same exact thing we, we know what the answer is up here, but it needs to get down here in our spirit so that, and how do we know that? How do we know is when, is when they're on a consistent basis in our life that, that we're depending on the answer for our state of mind, for, our, of course, our righteousness before God, for everything. And, and we're living with the answer that is greater than the questions. Does that make sense? We're living with the answer that is greater than the questions. And that's what I want to encourage you today, that the answer that you have that's in you, Jesus, and what he's given to us in his word, and get this, as children of, as children of God, wow, we have so much that God has invested into us. And, and this is what the Lord, I know this is what the Father's heart is for us because we see it in the Word. Jesus said it. He said to his disciples, he said, it's, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom so that, and I'll add this thought to it, so that we're living 
with the answer that is greater than all of my questions. Again, we can have questions about all kinds of things. Why, you know, we maybe you have a prodigal child. Why, God? Why? It doesn't make sense. Or a prodigal parent. Why, God? It doesn't make sense. And get this, God is not intimidated by our questions and by our humanity. He's not. He, he loves us. He wants us to pour out to him our heart. And But even then, again, when we have questions, the answer that he's given to us in his word, in Jesus, and his work at the cross is greater than the questions. And so live with the answer that's greater than the questions. Amen? And so that's why we can go to God in prayer. And that's why... Uh, we can we can again go to him in prayer and as uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 15 and 16 tell us that we have a great high pri- 14 through 16 we have a great high priest and we have a throne of grace that we can come boldly before and believe him for grace and mercy and fi- to find grace and mercy in time of need and so that's what we're doing today we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to meet every need um that we have today, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's mental, Jesus is our Savior, spirit, soul, mind, and body. In every way, He's our Savior. He's our deliverer. He's our healer. He's our sustainer. He's our provider. He's everything. He's the answer. So again, I'd love to, I'd love to comment, comment, read your uh, comments there where you're watching from. Um, and uh, your prayer requests. We're going to pray, uh, and I know most will watch this later, but we're going to pray and believe the Lord for miracles in every one of uh, every one of these situations today. So if you have a prayer request, again, you can put it down there. Uh, love to hear where you're watching from. Plus, press the thumbs up button. Let's pray, okay, for miracles. I want to pray, first of all, for miracles in our families. I know I see some of the comments there about um, prayer for families and family members to be saved or deliverance in family. Maybe that deliverance is you. Maybe you need deliverance today. We're going to pray right now. So let's, let's agree together in prayer. And if you're driving, you can drive, you can pray with your eyes open. Okay. So let's pray. Father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that is watching now or that will watch later. And I thank you, Lord, that you've called us together by your name, together, Lord, to agree in touching everything that we mention and believing you, Lord, for miracles. And you, th- oh, I thank you, Lord, that you promised us that if we ask you and if it's according to your will, then we, it is a guarantee we shall have what we've asked for. And we know, Lord, right now that the salvation of our families is your will. And so, Lord, we ask you right now for the moving of your Holy Spirit among our families, O Lord, in the name of Jesus, bring salvation to, to children, to parents, to uncles, to aunts, Lord, to family members, oh Lord, brothers and sisters, God, we ask you for salvation in our homes in the name of Jesus. And we take authority over every lying spirit that the devil has given to them. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, for the veil of unbelief to be removed in the name of Jesus. And we plead your blood, Jesus, over them. And we thank you, Lord, right now that your power, the power of your Holy Spirit to arrest them, to get their attention is greater than the lies of the enemy. And we declare it right now in the name of Jesus, that Jesus, you are Lord, even over our unsafe family members. We declare that you are Lord and you are Lord over every power of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. And we, Lord, we we just declare it right now, Lord, salvation in our families. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We ask you for your Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to them, Lord. And we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, I want to pray for those who need healing from stress and anxiety uh, and worry. 
Lord, as, as Cody has mentioned here, the Father and others as well. Lord, I pray, God, for healing and deliverance from stress and anxiety and worry and the fear of possible danger that's not even real. Lord, I pray that, God, you would bring deliverance and healing of the mind in the name of Jesus, that we would rest and not stress in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us, O Lord, just simply to rest and not stress. Lord, in Jesus' name, knowing that, God, there's no reason for us to worry because, Lord, you go before us. Lord, you've gone, be- you, you've gone in our past, Lord, and healed us. Lord, you're with us in the present, and you go before us in the future. And, Lord, all things work together for our good and for your glory. We declare it. We thank you for it, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing and deliverance right now from overwhelming stress and anxiety, that spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. For you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind in the name of Jesus. And we stand upon your truth right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we lift up, Lord, healing for physical healing. If you need a physical healing right now, I see that, Linda, you see heart trouble and others. Uh, I want to pray for that right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just lift up the needs for physical healing. And Lord, we just ask you, Lord, for your healing power and your healing virtue to flow right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, we take authority over every disease, no matter what it is, whether it's cancer, kin disease, liver disease, skin disease, Lord, whatever it is, bacterial infections, viral infections, we take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Lord, bones that are out of place, that are not in, in alignment, Father, we pray for healing in the name of Jesus of skeletal problems, Lord, mental problems, physical of every area. God, we ask you for healing in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And Father, where there's doctors that are needed, we pray, God, that you would bless bless us, bless your people with good doctors, with, with even saved, spirit-filled doctors in the name of Jesus. Lord, if they're not saved, that Lord, they would have, you would give them wisdom that you would guide their hands. Father, we thank you for that in advance in the name of Jesus. And Lord, right now, we will lift up our country. Let's pray for our country right now. Father, we lift up our country, the USA, and Lord, other countries that are watching this video, the UK, South Africa, Central and South America, Canada, Lord, other countries in the uh, Russia and the Israel, the, the New Zealand, Australia, Lord, we lift up this world, and I lift up the USA, and we pray, God, for a move of your spirit. Lord, a mighty move of your spirit. We pray, God, for a harvest of souls. We ask you, Lord, for a revival in the name of Jesus, that we would come back as the church, the body of Christ. We would come back to our first love. And Lord, our eyes would be fixed upon you as the body of Christ. And that Lord, that you would just, Lord, let the wind of your Holy Spirit blow through this country, blow through the White House, blow through the Senate and Congress. Lord, do the impossible. Lord, there's no limit to what you can do. So we believe you right now for the moving of your Holy Spirit upon our leaders, Lord, upon this country, O God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And I want to pray right now as well, because I've just had this in my spirit recently. Uh, I want to pray that God would just bring justice upon those who are doing evil in this country and destroying lives and hurting lives. Like, for example, drug dealers, pimps, um, human traffickers, sex traffickers. It's It's an evil of evils. And I want to pray that God bring justice upon them and ultimately save them, but bring justice upon them to stop their evil activity from hurting people. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up this issue, these issues, Lord, these, these, these evils in our land and in this world of drugs and prostitution and pimps and, 
and, and human trafficking and other evils, oh God. Murder, violence, Lord. And God, we pray that you would bring justice to it. Lord, you said it in your word in the book of Romans that God, you've given us, Lord, even civil leaders to do to, to, to bring justice on evil. And we pray for our first responders. We pray for our police, Lord, and, and, and other agencies, O oh God. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that justice would come upon those who are doing evil and hurting people. And we pray for an end to it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, expose it, we pray. We pray that, God, you would expose what's done in darkness all over this country. Bring exposure to it, and so it, it can end in the name of Jesus, or lives can be saved from it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we wanna, I want to lift up also uh, our, our leaders uh, in the ministry, pastors and those in the fivefold ministry, I want to pray for them because the those in ministry are under such assault of the enemy because the enemy wants us to shut up and to give up. So I want to pray for pastors. If you're a pastor, leader, if you know, pray pray for your path. Pray for the ministers that God has raised up. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we lift up pastors and evangelists, prophets, apostles, and uh, Lord, prophets. Lord, we lift up, Lord, those in ministry, praise and worship leaders, Lord, deacons, Lord, elders, Lord, others that are working unseen to others, Lord. They're not, they're not standing behind a pulpit, but Lord, but they are serving you, Lord. And God, I pray that you would encourage Lord, your servants right now, in the name of Jesus, bring encouragement, bring revival, bring refreshing right now. Let the wind of your Holy Spirit blow upon your servants right now, in the name of Jesus, and bring a refreshing, Lord. Let that word that you put in their heart, lo, let it burn like a fire, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that word that seems to have fizzled out, that zeal that has fizzled out, Lord, restore the zeal in your servants in the name of Jesus. Lord, give wisdom to your servants. Bring strength. Lord, bring clarity. Bring provision in every way, spiritual, financial, in every way, God. Bring provision, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Bring helpers. Bring servants, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we believe you to do that. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You know, whatever your need is, God is able to meet it. And if I didn't mention your need, there are others that will see it and will pray. Uh, and we're going to continue to believe the Lord for miracles. So share this video. Uh, again, subscribe to our Corner Ministries YouTube channel. Press like. That really does help. But God bless you and have a wonderful day in Jesus.